This video is quite complicated. It's really about self-protection, how self-protection is good, but it can turn into overcompensating for past pains in your life. And I'm gonna give you some examples of this so you can understand. What ends up happening when we go to therapy is many times we heal the understanding. We get understanding of why we feel the way we do. But the tactic we take forward is not wise. We learn to overprotect. We become hypersensitive to things rather than really dealing with the pain. When a client comes in for therapy and something their partner is doing is making them so hurt, so in pain, and to me, when I see it, it doesn't seem like it should be that, that much or it's more severe than what I would anticipate given the situation. I have to go back and say, does this feel like anything you did in your childhood or you went through? I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say you grew up with parents who one was an alcoholic and the other one was maybe overly severe. So they expected you at a very young age to be more responsible than you were. Maybe things like coming home and starting dinner or lock, you know, always making sure that you were in charge of locking the gates and turning the alarms on. At the age of five, that's pretty young. That's too young to insist that on your child. But let's say you did and your child was competent but now you're that child and you're grown up and you're in a relationship and you find yourself picking people where you are taking all the responsibility. You're doing everything. Like your partner basically puts, has to put no effort in because you're overcompensating, you're doing everything. And then you go to therapy and you find out, hey, wait a minute, I don't have to be this responsible because the therapist points out, you know, basically you've been picking up for everybody else. You don't have to do that anyway anymore. So you go to the opposite extreme and all of a sudden you're doing things that are almost passive. Like let's say you're going to, you and your partner are going to go on an exclusive exotic trip and you're really excited and you, you're, you're pretty meticulous about packing ahead of time because that's who you are. That's the responsible part. And you notice as you're packing, like you put in rain gear, you put in things that you believe, lounge pants that you're going to want to sit around with. And you kind of look at your partner's stuff and you're like, you know what? I should put that in his suitcase, but I'm not going to because that's his responsibility. Even things such as reading glasses, if you even if you see them sitting there and you know they're going to forget them, you won't many times put them in in this situation. So then what happens is you go on your trip, a really sexy, exotic trip with the two of you, and you're on the airplane and your partner goes, oh my gosh, it's supposed to rain the whole time we're there and I don't have any rain gear. You saw their rain gear there, you packed yours, but you told yourself, mm, I'm not going to be overly responsible. That's their stuff. Well, really, that's when your overprotection, your oversensitivity to what you learned in therapy can't adjust to you being a loving, transparent, honest partner. In other words, it holds you back from maybe getting along. Your partner's going to be upset. And they're going to feel bad about it, especially if you say, yeah, I'm sitting, I saw it there, but I didn't want it. You know, that's your responsibility. Makes you look like you're less than a team player. When you're married, you know, that's all part of it. You're supposed to kind of help take care of each other. Many times when we have relational injuries, maybe you were abandoned by your father or you grew up with an abusive mom or you grew up with, with a, as with a single parent and you always felt like the other parent had long ago forgotten you and didn't want you. That, if you don't resolve that pain, if you don't deal with that, then I can promise you that's gonna show up in every relationship you have. And our relational hurts, when they're brought into the real world, we're gonna take one of two sides. We're either gonna be extremely sensitive when anyone we date 
or Mary offends that part, or we're going to get some kind of therapy that, sh that tells us about what we did in the past and explains it to us. And then we take a 360 and we say, well, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to give you one more example. If you were abandoned by your father, let's just say your father never gave you credit for anything. They were always never there. Everything else was always busy. You know, it always came first. So you grew up and you never, you might have gone to a little bit of therapy, but you start dating and, you know, you're getting older and, you know, you want to find someone to, to end up marrying. If that person, let's say you start dating, if that person that you're dating makes any flaws or, or even suggests anything that will make you feel less important, you're going to react. Not only are you going to react, but you're going to react and get angry. And that anger is going to end up ruining the present relationship you have. Why? Because you didn't, when you did get help, if you got help with your unresolved issues, you didn't get help enough to extend it into the present. Because if you, basically, if you change any behavior, but you don't remember that a partnership is about forgiveness, a partnership is about many times being hurt and coming back together, then you will never have that fully developed. And no relationship will ever be able to be what you think it should be or as loving or close as it could be. Because along with resolving your past pain, you have to bring it into the present and you have to understand that going forward, I will feel bad about this issue again. In the case of my father being, you know, never being there for me or being hard on me or never really showing up for me. But unless you understand that was the past and I was a child then, now I'm an adult and I can speak and I can understand that no one is perfect. Anybody I date or end up with in a, in a long-term relationship is going to have flaws. Then in the present, I have to remember that this person is different. And in order to start and maintain a healthy relationship, I need to take that sensitivity, tell my partner, and rather than expect my partner never to upset that sensitivity, I learn how to manage when they do. This is a very important part of being an adult, being responsible, and being a partner that is going to be able to create a healthy relationship with another person.